like to uh, begin with resolution 090864, adopting the transit investment plan. Mr. General Manning. Thank you, Mr. President, board members. Uh, uh, you know, the, at one level, I think one can see the transit, transit investment plan is fairly thick document that you all have, uh, and uh, and kind of ask, well, what does that really do? What is it in fact? How does it? Uh, what's important about it? And um, I do want to be able to stress. I think it is a very important document because what it really does is we know that at TriMet, um, although we provide the service side of uh, the transit equation. The total transit experience requires much more, and to be able to attract people to be able to ride transit requires much more than just that transit service. Um, you have to have a safe place where you can stand waiting for the bus or uh, the max uh, uh, platform uh, to be able to, uh, uh, to wait. You need to be able to get to that location safely. Um, that means you have to have sidewalks or at least a, a good path. You need to have safe crossings of streets. There needs to be a series of other things most of which we try that do not have authority over. Local jurisdictions do. So the transit investment plan is really intended to be able to put forward a blueprint of where and how we're going to make additional transit investments. Certainly in this economy, not much is being made. In fact, quite the contrary, we're actually reducing uh, uh, some of our services, much to uh, our dislike, and yet uh, inevitable because of the, of the worst economic conditions in, in 80 years. But having said that, uh, we want to be able to plan for the future. The Transit Investment Plan provides that. It also provides for other jurisdictions, whether it be county jurisdictions or city uh, jurisdictions, to be able to plan how can they use their investments to leverage our investments. We recognize that uh, in Line 57 in uh, Washington County coming into Multnomah County uh, is a very good example of where partnerships are able to ensure that one plus one equals more than two. That is, with Washington County, the City of Beaverton, the City of Hillsborough, the Oregon Department of Transportation, and TriMet, we were able to make a number of improvements along the TV highway, such as extending sidewalks, making for better, safer crossings of streets, and a series of other things that encourage transit use on that alignment. This plan really uh, gives the blueprint for other jurisdictions to likewise make those leverage investments that we all gain by having put together. Uh, I would uh, highlight some of the specific elements within the plan uh, that are there. Um, the first uh, is that it is a uh, uh, Restress for you. It's a five-year plan. That really means it's kind of a uh, uh, midterm. It gets updated annually. Uh, it talks about how uh, and where we're going to make investments. Uh, it really gives, as I said earlier, a, a blueprint for how local jurisdictions can, uh, by making some of their own investments, move uh, forward with uh, uh, their own investments to leverage ours. Uh, it also talks about other priorities, such as providing uh, transit tracker information, how to be able to uh, make that work even more effectively. Currently, 1.4 million calls a month come into Transit Tracker, um, and it talks about that. Uh, our trip planner, which really assists people in making trips, so they can uh, put into uh, on our online trip planner, they can put in where they're coming from, where they're going to. It gives both walking directions as well as transit use uh, directions, um, and becomes very, very important. Uh, one of the things that uh, uh, is uh, kind of a nice ad has been <coughs> Google Maps for transit planning, and that's been that partnership we've had with Google. Um, it's also that uh, we've uh, opened up our data to, uh, to anybody, and that's allowed for people to develop their own applications using our transit and data. Um, one of the ones uh, we have now over 30 uh, uh, individual applications for uh, your uh, handheld uh, device. Uh, one of the ones that I thought was particularly uh, uh, interesting, somebody created what's called INAP, uh, and that is so that if you're on a, a, a transit, uh, uh, on a bus or a train, and you're getting close to your station but have fallen asleep, um, it actually sends off an alarm and wakes you up so you'll get off at your right spot. Uh, uh, it, uh, but it's uh, that and uh, over 30 other applications have been developed by citizens provided to us, we make sure, we don't censor them in any way, we just might make sure that they can actually be supported um, and then make them available to other uh, others. Uh, uh, and as I said, INAP is uh, kind of one of the fun ones that's uh, been put up. Uh, 
overall, uh, we are looking at uh, additional uh, investments as the economy comes back. I indicated earlier during the discussion of the previous ordinance that uh, the area around frequent service lines uh, and restoring those uh, are ones that are some of our highest priority, but others are uh, aligned here. Um, lastly, let me say again, in this weak economy and the fact we don't have investment dollars, it, uh, it at one level seems a little less important why you have this transit investment plan. But because it's updated annually, it's a chance to be able to plan for the future with all of our other jurisdictions. Very, very important document. We have to answer any questions, but urge your adoption. Move adoption, Mr. Chair. Second. 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 Great. I notice uh, on page four, it says the board believes all the elements should be included in the transportation investment plan and changes should be made. We should ask that you direct us accordingly gave me an opportunity to speak. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, as I travel through Plaquemines County, uh, especially on the sunny side, 82nd Drive, uh, other areas, uh, I, I noticed that more and more people are using transit. And they're standing in the rain because of lack of shelters. And on 82nd Drive, some of them are standing in mud. Uh, so I would ask that you take a look uh, you know, I'm even willing to ride with whomever to give them an idea of what I'm talking about, uh, to show them the actual spots that I'm talking about. Because I think it's important that, uh, as we said earlier, all of our uh, riders experience uh, the good things we're doing in TriMet. And one of them is to provide shelters, especially in this weather. Are you referring to today's rain? <laughs> The answer is, uh, we'd love to take you up on that. Uh, we obviously, in the Trans Investment Plan, talks about a whole series of elements about how to get to things like shelters. We generally, just because about, we have about, oh, I want to look at all like Carolyn, about an eighth, a seventh or so of our bus stops have shelters. When we look toward adding them and we do add shelters, we look at how many boardings we have at those and try to be able to put it where most people use it. Uh, but uh, we'd always like more education, so we will be happy to work with you. Okay, and I just want to mention that the transit investment plan has been a useful tool for me uh, in using with local jurisdictions, the, the impact board member uh, from TriMet. Um, I've also come to appreciate how integrated land use, transportation, pedestrian connections, those kinds of things are to the success of the, uh, and the design of the system, are to the success of uh, transit and, and rolling out transit in all areas. So uh, I think it's a useful tool. Okay, we're good to go through the discussion. Uh, all those in favor?